How's it going aliens? My name is Alien today I'm back on another Identify video and today's video will be my IDV Academy Hunter's Guide for Dream Witch. So let's get right into the video. Okay before I get into the guide I kind of want to explain what I'm doing. Um, so this is my first IDV Academy Hunter's Guide but there will be a lot more guides for survivors and hunters because there's just so many characters out and it's been a long time since i did guides consistently consistently so expect to see a lot more so if you have any specific characters both survivors and hunters uh tell me in the comments below so i can do them next so there's a specific format for hunting and for surviving that i'll do so for hunters since this is the first one uh I'll explain every single step of the guide as I get to it and it'll be labeled in the video which part we're at and then when I do my first survivor guide it'll be the same way so I chose to do dream witch for the first one since Tomy just came out and a lot of people have requested for an updated one and she's been the character I've been playing most because I've been top one with her this season so it just made sense to do her first um, so let's get started with the guide. So the first section of the guide will be the introduction to the character for players that are newer or just not really familiar with her. I want to go over the skills and the traits of the character and the tier of the character. So Dream Witch, if you don't know, is an S tier hunter. She's one of the three best hunters in the game and she has been for a long time so if you're deciding to pick dream witch just know she is one of the best hunters in the game however she's a difficult hunter to play and she's a map control big brain type of hunter uh, she relies on snowballing with a lot of leeches and she relies on making really good plays with your followers and she relies on multitasking so this is her first external trait uh she conceals herself where she gains incredible movement speed but she can't interact so this is basically her main body uh, the only change here from before is that survivors do get a notification when you are near them this used to not be the case so this is just you're the main body they can't see you they don't know where you're at but when you're close they will get a notification that you're close then you have her followers the biggest change here is that when you use a trait the other followers cooldown of that trait will be increased by 20 seconds so if blink is up for both followers and you use it then it'll take 20 more seconds for the next follower to get a trait but the followers are what you're going to use to get hits with chair they're the actual hunter that can interact because the main body cannot interact and then this witch mark so when you do deploy a leech when you leech onto a survivor where that follower spawns it will create a mark so when the survivors pick up that mark they can then use that to deleach themselves or to deleach teammates if they deleach teammates it's a very quick process if they deleach themselves it's a longer process uh, deleaching is basically just getting rid of the follower, which is huge for stabilizing the game. This is her first presence. You, this is just controlling the followers. At first presence, the cooldown of the leech scales just get shortened. And then at max presence, you get a bigger movement radius. So a huge thing about Dream Witch is... The followers can only go so far from the main body, but once you get to max presence, uh, it the range significantly increases. So now let's get to the next step. What I'm going to do for hunting is I'm going to go through a bot match, really just to show you a character walkthrough. So that we can kind of go with what you should do in a match so this will be the beginning middle and end and you'll be able to 
have a good idea of how you're supposed to play the character in a, a a bot match and then this will translate over to a real match so when you spawn with dream witch you fast so you immediately look for a survivor if i don't lag so you're gonna walk over to a survivor when you walk over you're gonna leech them so here what you usually want to do is you want to trap the survivor in a way that your spawn is coming one side and the leech will come the other side don't do that but you'll basically trap them in so that they get sandwiched in another thing you can do that i like a lot is i like sending the leech away from the survivor and the spawn at the same time if you see this because right now they have two characters on them at the same time so it's harder to dodge a huge strat is usually you're gonna get the first hit with leech so when you're using patroller or even blink the first hit will probably come with leech because against good survivors they're gonna make sure you get rid of your leech so when that happens, you can then just use your main body patroller and your spawn will come back to you. That's how you get your first down. Once that happens, you're going to have to deleach them again. You can put this leech anywhere. A good idea at times is to put the leech where your balloon survivor is because then you will make that balloon survivor pick up their witch mark you may ask why would you want the balloon survivor to pick up their witch mark but this is so that the rescuer who's coming does not pick it up because what we said earlier is that when you deleach a teammate, it's a lot quicker than if they deleach themselves. So realistically, if you're chasing a survivor, you're probably going to tunnel them to death. So that witch mark doesn't really matter if they pick it up. But if the rescuer picks it up, that does matter. So you're going to cheer them and then you're going to send your leech out to either patrol a cypher or to like this and it's gonna hang at the edge of this so that this survivor can't come so if he does come you would just hit so you're gonna either send them for the rescuer or you're gonna send them to watch his cypher another thing you can do is you can use your patroller if a mercenary is coming or something like that you can use your patroller to cut off the rescue or you can use it to secure your second down I get the second down now preferably when the rescuer is coming you're gonna want to leech them because you're gonna hit the rescuer and then you're gonna leech them and the point of that is now that leech is gonna follow them so now they're pressured because they're injured and they have a leech on them so they can't decode normally or else they're risking dying they're risking being incapacitated that's how you start to build the snowball um the only other huge things i think i would say is usually when you use patroller when they rescue for this second time let's see if they come for it if they rescue that for the second time that's when you're going to want to switch normally your trait to blink because when they aren't coming because on that second time it may be two cyphers left, one cypher left. The goal as Dream Witch at that point of the game is to get the kill quickly. Because once you get that kill quickly, you can start to snowball quickly. Because you're going to have a leech on the survivor that rescued, you're still going to have this person down. So you're already building your pressure. So if you can kill the your first tunnel, you can then down the rescuer, you can really get pressure on them. So... 
you're going to want to switch to blink when it comes to that point if they're at a pallet or something like that so that you don't waste time using another patroller instead you just quickly blink what this also means is that all your leeches will get blinked so now for the rest of the game your chase becomes much stronger that's the basics of a dream witch match um we will look at a competitive match a high tier match for dream witch so that we can see how this plays out in a real game against top level players but that's the basics pretty much of it the next section of the guide that we will be going over is the best persona to use for her but also the best trait to use for her so for dream witch the two traits you can use are patroller and blink Warp may be good on her, but her chase is not great, and Warp isn't the best chase uh, trait to use. And it's just very new to the game. So, this may end up being good, but as of right now, these are the two starter traits that you will have. Patroller, and you'll have Blink. What determines Patroller or Blink is a couple things but mainly it's the survivors that you're facing so right now i'll put up a uh trait chart for dream witch so that you can see what characters are good against patroller and what oh what characters are bad against patroller and what characters are bad against blink and which characters it doesn't matter so you'll see patroller plus one these are all characters that when you see them you want to bring patroller against because it counters them something like perfumer patroller counters her really hard because she can't perfume because she's going to get bit characters like psychologist first officer the patroller will bite him out of the watch so these are characters you really want to bring patroller against the next tier is characters that patroller is usually good against this usually means that they have something to kite the followers they have something to um kite the sandwich so when you try to trap them in they're able to get out of it characters like entomologist char characters like aeroplanist uh you know characters like lawyer if you're just coming to them with no trait then they're probably going to be able to get out of it. So instead, you don't want to waste time sandwiching them to get a hit and then blink. Because blink doesn't give you a free hit. Instead, you want to get a free hit by patroller. The next tier is just characters that it really doesn't matter too much if you bring patroller or blink against. Then we have characters you want to use blink for. Uh, these are characters that counter patroller maybe not super hard but they do counter it so like priestess wildling you can't patrol him in the boar gravekeeper you can't patrol him in a shovel and forward uh he can help harass against the patroller so you want to bring blink and then the last here are characters you really want to blink bring blink against because they counter patroller super hard characters that are hit tanks like barmaid and doctor you have little girl who can leech when she's being patrolled you have acrobat who has uh unlimited balls and flywheel the counter patroller and you have antiquarian who can use her anti-jump to counter patroller and also she can just uh make you not able to hit for that time she gets bit so these characters you want to use blink against now let's get into the personas you should use so this is the uh persona for patroller you want to go down right and then the standard build would be to go max hunt and one point in berserker you can change it up by going less hunt so if you do that you can go something like max berserker or you can put this in wanted order that's pretty much all the options you get if you want to go for something like impact or impulsive you technically can but i wouldn't recommend it this is a pretty popular build as well um 
you can just not go hunt if you want and put it elsewhere like this build for example so that's up to you but the standard build that i would suggest and that i use is three and hunt down right and berserker now let's get into the insolence build so if you go blink this is the preferred build you want to go down left with insolence because insolence just builds up your map pressure really quickly and it always keeps your leeches off of cooldown so if you go this this is the build i would use you get hunt and max hunt and you get two berserker another good one to use is you can go no hunt go max berserker and you can get your wanted order so this is a good one or you can go you can get a little bit of everything the one i probably most suggest is this build but wanted order is very good with insolence and blink because you're constantly building map pressure with this build and with this trait so wanted order just helps you know where everyone is uh let's now get to her counters so i created a matchup chart that i'll put on the screen right now and this is her matchup chart so you'll be able to see what character she's good against and what character she's not good against so we have plus two these are characters that dream Witch is really good against. she counters them explorer lucky guy perfumer mind's eye postman she counters them pretty hard because perfumer if you bring patroller she's she can't do anything unless she maybe has like a cheerleader to help her out and explorer dream Witch counters him really hard because she can just find him really easily then we have plus one. These characters Dream Witch is good against. Uh, characters like Lawyer, uh, Enchantress, Dancer, Officer. She's good against these characters. She She's not great, so they can kite you. But it's a lot less likely. Zero. These characters are basically even with her. So there's pros and cons. So something like Mechanic. She's an easy kill for Dream Witch. But the issue is... Her bot puts another survivor on the map that Dream Wish can't leech onto, and this helps the decoding. So, characters like Coordinator, her gun can kite out a patroller, but she doesn't really have anything past that. So, these are just uh, even matchups. Novelist, he's good at avoiding uh, being sandwiched. Then we have Minus One. These are characters that counter Dream Wish. Uh, the only ones that I'd say to kind of look out for is something like Aeroplanus. He can be a minus two at times. And Patient can be a minus two. If they have a cheerleader, then they would be a minus two. But just their base kit, they're a minus one. And also Priestess, depending on the map, if it's Ever Sleeping or Chinatown, she would be a minus two. But for now, she's a minus one. And then finally, we have minus two. So these characters hard counter Dream Witch. Uh, barmaid, Anti, they count her really hard. Psychologist, Doctor, Little Girl's one of the biggest counters. Acrobat, and then the two really good rescuers, Mercenary and Forward. So I hope this helps kind of... Uh, Giving you something that you can screenshot, something you can go back to while you're learning Dream Wish. All of these charts, instead of just me saying this, you're able to look back at these charts and kind of know, like when you're headed into a match as a beginner, this is who is good. This is who I should chase. Maybe this is who I shouldn't chase. This is who I should bring Blink for, Patroller for. That's really the point. And then for the final chart... Let's get into her map chart, which will be her best and worst maps. And you'll see for her best maps, you have Ever Sleeping and Arms Factory. Ever Sleeping is her best map by far. 
uh, she has really good cipher control all over the place. The middle cipher she can always get to. And the only place to kill her map presence is Graveyard. Arms Factory is a really good map. Arms Factory is not as good as Ever Sleeping because there's more pallets in Arms Factory. So this helps you kite out Patroller easier. But it's still a really good map for her. And she gets really good map control. Then we have the good maps. So we have Lakeside, Leo's Memory, and Chinatown. These maps have cons to them. Uh, but all in all, they're pretty good maps. Like Leo's is a really open map. Chinatown is a really open map. That's really good because it's harder to kite patroller. And then Lakeside is a map that you usually will have pretty good cipher control on. Uh, now for her OK maps, we have Red Church. OK... Uh, a red church is a love hate type of relationship it's a small map so she gets really good cipher control on it but it has a lot of pallets which makes it easy to kite patrol her on top of it it's a map that allows survivors to cipher rush you a lot quicker because they can get to their next cipher quickly so it's love hate relationship it's just an okay map we have her bad map, and that's Hospital. Hospital actually has pretty decent cipher control, but the chase is just really bad on this map. There's so many places to kite patroller out at, uh, so many pallets. Hospital is kind of messes up her leeches a bit, and it's a really good place to kite dream which for free. So Hospital has good cipher control. If you can get downs, it's not a bad map. But that's the issue with it. And then her worst map is Moonlit. So Moonlit is not the hardest map to get downs on. It's just the fact that she has really bad cipher control on this map. Because it's too big. And at times there's really nothing you can do. You kind of feel... Uh, you don't feel like a S tier hunter at times on this map. Because you don't have the usual map control you would expect. And then things like Roller Coaster uh, counter her and they buy a lot of time for survivors. And it also helps survivors that are good against her like Embalmer, Priestess, Acrobat, Patient. It helps them become even better against her. So that's why it's her worst map. But Dream Witch is a strong hunter and uh, she's S tier. So she is playable on every map. This isn't, oh, you shouldn't play her on Moonlit. No, it just means it's going to be difficult and it's going to be a harder time than you will have on Eversleeping. doesn't mean that she's unusable. Uh, so for the final, for the, uh, you go to practice mode. For the final part of the guide before we get into the commentary over top tier gameplay so that i can kind of uh talk you through the mindset of a top tier dream watch is something that i'll do for survivors and hunters before i get into the gameplay and that's showing you one uh fun trick to do with the character the reason i want to do this is because these characters are are really nuanced there's so many things that i didn't tell you there's so many things that's going to come up in a match that i just didn't get to no way i brought insolence i have to pawn my my uh, trump card build there's so many things that i didn't get to because there's just too many things that can happen in a match so i want to use this as a way to kind of get your brain thinking and to get your mind moving in the direction of mastery of this character. So I think by showing you like a, a cool trick you can do with the character, uh, it will open you up to kind of think about more things you can do because that will lead you to, you know, try to explore gameplays of her and, and just experiment with her on your own. So the trick that I'll show for Dream Witch is 
I'll, I'll show it in 110 seconds. Okay, so now that we're 10 seconds to it, I'll leech the character. So basically, you can, when you bite someone with patroller, it shows you the bite animation and you can't move for that time. But if you do something like this, and you switch trait, when you bite, it cancels the animation for you. So while she's still getting bit like this, you're able to move freely. So this is important because for characters that can counter patroller, uh, like aeroplaners or like acrobat, you have to sit through that first bite with them. So then you both move at the same time and then they can use a ball or they can use flywheel to uh, counter that patroller. But if you use this mid game, when you really want to get hit or you really want to get the down on them this will allow you to instantly do it because they're still getting bit and you're just gonna come and you can blink them if you want or you could just hit them if you're close enough and you're able to then instantly down them you don't need blink up you just need to be able to switch using trump card so this is the gameplay that i chose to commentate over it's from the winter japan ivt uh the hunter's medal he's a long time dream witch main he's been a professional hunter so he's one of the best dream witches in japan but also one of the best dream witches in the world i chose this gameplay because i felt like he does a really good job of showcasing a lot of important aspects of the character uh, just starting off, you can see that the map is Arms Factory, so that's one of her best maps. And now if we go to his bands, Seer, Ford, Mercenary, Aeroplanus, these are all minus ones and minus twos. So they all counter her really hard, so those are good bands. But then, if you go over to the Survivor lineup, you'll see Acrobat, Barmaid, Wildling, and Anti. These are all pretty much minus twos. They knew what hunter he was going to play and they countered it as hard as they could. And they did a pretty good job at it. Uh, I do want you to guess right now what trait you think he'll bring. If you were paying attention earlier to the trait chart, you should know what trait he should use and also what persona he should go with that correlates to that trait. But let's dive into the gameplay. So that's a pretty standard um, Orange Factory spawn selection. And for him, he's going to choose that corner. As Dream Witch, I didn't really get into spawn selection uh, much. And the reason for that is it doesn't matter too much on her. She has a lot more freedom than a lot of other hunters. Because she's just faster than a lot of other hunters. So it's not like you need your first target to be somewhere usually as dream witch you're just choosing a spawn that blocks off a pretty good cypher so him choosing that spawn probably should block off orange factory which is a good one to block off and also you want to choose a spawn that gives you pretty good access to the whole map so you want to choose a spawn that's obviously going to get you your first target but everywhere because you don't know where the survivor spawns so you want to be able to if that's someone that he doesn't want to chase if that's not the bar made in front of him you want to be able to move quickly to your other target so that's just a pretty good spawn on this map to choose but all of these characters counter him really hard so you know the first chase doesn't really matter as long as it's not the wildling so dive into the match hopefully you guessed right you can see the trait he brought is blink and the persona he brought was insolence to go with it which makes a lot of sense when you look at the survivor cop so right away he's going to do something we went over earlier he's going to send the leech away from the barmaid so that instantly starts following her and then he's going to use a spawn to just harass his ante for a bit the reason is he needs to wait for his blink anyway to kill the barmaid so you can just use this time to break pallets to 
uh, disrupt ciphers and that's what he's doing. The ideal way to kill a barmaid will be to get the first hit with the leech because that means no attack recovery and then you can quickly follow that up with your spawn that's following you. So he's setting up the trap right now. The leech, I mean, yeah, the leech is going away and then he's going to bring it back. He trapped her in and now the spawn still following him. So as you can see, because of insolence, his leech cooldown is back up. He won't use it because he needs to kill this barmaid. But against other survivors, you would leech them again. And that's why he waited until he got blinked back up so they could just quickly down her. And now he's going to throw his leech out. And that's another thing that we went over. He puts his leech where the survivor is ballooned at so that she picks up the de-leech mark and not someone else now you just send her leech away from the chair you want to keep your spawn at the chair you want to send the leech away from the chair wildling's good against other survivors you maybe get out an elbow pad or football wildling doesn't matter he's going to get to the chair so you just want to hit him and that's really all you can do you can hit him and you can leech him and that's really it uh he's able to quickly down the barmaid again and right there he's going to use that main body blink to leech him that's very important if you can get a hit and a leech on the rescuer and you can quickly down the survivor that's shared you're in really good pace and that's what he's on so he's just going to send the leech of the wildling away from him so that I can follow him this is another important thing I want to stop the video to show. When you're facing a harasser like forward or anti or batter or something like that, you always want to send two leeches to the down survivor. Yes, this takes away your map control, but that's the counter aspect of them. Uh, if you only have one leech on that survivor, then they can harass you for free and you're not gonna do well so you have to send two leeches to that survivor but that will counter the harasser which he does right there and the wildling he's leeched and he doesn't have a, even have a d leech mark so the wildling is gonna have to at some point pick up a d leech mark because he's just stuck with that leech and it slows down the decoding because he's gonna always be scared of that leech killing him the auntie does a good job there. She sees that the dream witch isn't at the chair and takes the free save. And now she can just kind of bully, which is really good about auntie. But dream witch has two followers. So it's going to buy time, but you should be able to get this down eventually because you have blink, you have two followers, and you'll be able to get it. She so saw the wildling does have the de-leech mark now. He, does, he did get rid of his leech. That's really good, but it slowed down the ciphers because the anti was using the time to harass and the wildling was using the time to deleach. Another point I want to stop the video, this is a great play. He uses his blink to get the hit on the anti. It's always a great idea to get hits on survivors because as Dream Witch, that's how you snowball the game and win. But especially right here because he uses the blink of the barmaid's leech the barmaid is dying right now so you use it or you lose it he does a great job of getting value out of a leech that's about to die so he basically gets a free hit on the ante even though you'd say oh well he used blink yeah but that leech was dying anyway so that's a great play and now the wildling's injured and the ante's injured and they still have you know about a full cipher to do So now he's going to just go to the final cipher, which will be the one in arms. He'll leech the wildling. You don't actually want to chase him here. You just want to get him on the board. And then you want to send your leech away. Because now the wildling at some point is going to have to get off the board to de-leech. Because you can't de-leech on the board and it doesn't last forever. So when he does that, that will be your opportunity to hit him. So in the meantime, you just want to find the healing survivors 
they heal them quickly but you still want to find some survivors so that you make them use their ability or you get a hit or something or flywheel and that's what he does he makes auntie use some of her stick and now he can go back to the wildling's leech and blink the wildling he does know the final cipher is factory because he was just there he saw the progress so you immediately want to send your spawn to that cipher you don't need your spawn to pick up the wildling you'll just leech the wildling you need your spawn and that cipher so that they can't finish it and that's what he's doing he's gonna prioritize getting this spawn to the cipher uh, he wants the leech to be closer to the cipher, but the ante does a good job basically saying, no, you can't go here. So this kind of messes up the map control a bit for him, but he's still in a good position. Right now, the spawn's on the cipher, so the acrobat can't decode it. You know that, and if he does start decoding it, you'll see it. So you don't have to worry about that. You're just going to worry about the rescue, and if you see it shake, that's when you'll go back and get your hit right there he saw it moving and he's able to get a free hit so survivors get greedy on a 70 or an 80 percent cypher then you're just going to get a free hit out of it anyway as long as you're paying attention uh you do want to leech the ante here whenever your leech cooldown is up you want to be using it you want to keep your map control that's her power when she loses those leeches that's when she becomes weak this is another big thing i want to kind of pause the video for he has a leech on the wildling he just leeched the ante so he's able to see both of them so he knows where they are now he's going to go back to his spawn and he sees that there's no tinnitus so he can make a pretty good guess on where the acrobat will be because the acrobat is going to be at the other ciphers he may even see it moving so now he has vision on all three survivors and this is really important because when you have that information you're able to make plays and make decisions accordingly to it So the leeches are just uh, pressuring the survivors. And that's what you want to do. You want to pressure the de-leech. You don't want to let them de-leech quickly. Because you want to try to get your blink cooldown up. You want to get your leech cooldown up. So you want to pressure. And now he's going to go for the acrobat. He's going to chase his acrobat. And he's going to kill this acrobat. The reason he can make this play is because of what I pointed out earlier. Is that he had vision on everyone so because he had vision on all the survivors he knows that the survivor isn't on that final cipher if they were on the final cipher he couldn't make this play because it would be prime but he knows it's going to take them time just to get back to it so he had enough time to kill the acrobat and then send his spawn back to the final cipher now they're in a tough spot. They only had time to heal up the wildling. They did have time to de-leech, but your leech cooldown's up, so you're going to leech the wildling. So all you want to do is just rush the rescue. You don't want to give the ante time to get to a new cipher and all that. You just want to rush the rescue, and that's what he does. And he even gets lucky enough to get the hit on the wildling. And now the acrobat is basically in no man's land. He's trapped because spawns on that cypher so he can't decode it but then he's injured and the leech is on the chair so he can't save the auntie's doing a good job she's trying to finish this other cypher but right here he's gonna make a smart play and he's gonna let his spawn follow him out of that cypher because he knows the acrobat can't finish the final cypher because he has a leech on him and he's injured and he also knows the acrobat can't save because the wildlings leech is on the chair so the spawn doesn't need to be at the chair and the spawn doesn't need to be at the cypher the spawn can be on the other cypher and on the antiquarian so that's what he's going to do he's just going to make sure the acrobat doesn't save and then when the spawn follows he'll try to down the ante before she can pop the cypher that's what he does he has blink back up he's able to blink her and now this is a uh pretty easy 
four kill because the acrobat's leech so there's really nothing he can do uh that was kind of a funny blink predict that he didn't blink but it ended up working out for the acrobat but as this uh gameplay ends if you did enjoy this video please give a like if you do want to see more guides in the future please subscribe to the channel and that'll be all for the video bye ああ。<笑>